I teach online because it's extremely rewarding. There are opportunities for engagement that are not available in the face-to-face -face situation. Uh, there are a lot of obstacles to interactivity in the classroom. Uh, students are shy, uh, students are having English as a second language or they have a learning disability which prevents them really from actively participating in an interaction with other people in a face-to-face -face situation. Those students have a chance to, to organize their thoughts and create uh, interactivity uh, using their own, uh, at their own pace without the pressure of the, of the immediacy. When someone's skeptical about uh, whether I can teach or anyone can teach something online, uh, what I try to remind them of is that the teaching process is, is hopefully not always an instructor talking in front of you. And that, by the way, could be accomplished online as well. Um, however, the, in my view, as a faculty member, um, the role of the instructor is to provide you with tasks that have integrity, that have instructional integrity. And hopefully, my skill as an instructor is not only to provide those tasks for you, the student, to make the students work, but then to provide them with relevant feedback to help them learn. So my job as an instructor and uh, the job of instruction is to make others work and then to provide feedback as to how they are achieving the instructional goals. So that can be accomplished online. Um, so that's what I tell them. And then I follow it up with, it's not for everybody. <laughs> Some respond much better in, in a room with an instructor. And so both formats work. What I try, uh, you know, some of my efforts along these lines are, uh, are, are usually explaining that one does not have to really affect the other. In other words, online instruction should in no way impede upon face-to-face -face instruction. Both have value and both have strengths and weaknesses. I would say try it. Keep an open mind and try it. So if you're, a, if you're somebody who's considering teaching, talk to other people who have done it. And, and, um, and you're gonna hear some good and you're gonna hear some bad because that's everything we do, right? No matter what it is, if you're teaching face-to-face -face or online, there's always gonna be pluses and, and minuses involved. But don't be afraid to try something different. And, and, and give it a shot. See how you feel about it after you've done it once or twice. Um, soak up all the training you can get. Learn as much as you can about this field. Talk to students. I would say that's a big one. You know, talk to students and see what they think. And see how, and see, ask them these same type of questions. What is it that you want? Come in and meet with someone and just talk about it. Brainstorm. Uh, what we do is we assign a faculty mentor. So after, it, at our school, they meet with me and we talk about the whole process, both structurally and conceptualizing. We assign a mentor. And we just want to get everybody to understand, take baby steps. Just use the learning management system to make it work for you, to get you on board, and then see the um, potential of doing online or using the digital environment to help you connect with your students and at the point that you would feel comfortable with. My experience with literally thousands of faculty members over the last 15 years is that if they try it, they'll probably like it. So if when they tell me, well, my students can't do that, my response is you don't really know until you've given them the opportunity. Now, the majority of students that I personally teach are freshmen or sophomore students at a community college. And the community college accepts any students who is a high school graduate or has a GED. And those students don't come to our campus as mature adult learners. They come to our campus with the perception that the teacher does most of the work and that they will get by simply by showing up and attending class. So, if my success with those students and with that subset of students is very rewarding and successful, then I'm pretty sure that the teacher that I'm trying to get to try this is not uh, dealing with a population that's more challenging. And, and once they try it, and I, I, I tried to help them 
create a set of discussion rules and, pro and procedures that almost guarantee a lot of interactivity and a lot of participation and encourage them to stand back and watch it evolve, then they become converted because they are rewarded when their students are talking about their discipline, contributing teaching presence to a conversation that the professor never thought that they would be able to provide. Some people might think that it's not, it's not as good as or that you can't have some kind of personal connection with other people. Um, some people still believe that it's easier, right? Um, so, or that it's not as, you know, it's, there's still a little bit out there about it's not as valid or, you know, those sort of things. Um, you can't do that online, right? I, I hear that one a lot. Well, how do you do science online? You can't do that online. How you get, so, um, so, so those are some of the common misconceptions and how you respond to those really depends on the person who's asking, right? So your audience is critically important. If it is another fellow educator, well, then you can base your answer in research. You can explain to them and show them because there is research that says we're, what we're doing is, is good and it has good outcomes and there's ways that you can, uh, you know, make it not so um, um, impersonal, right? And so basing an answer on research is always important. Um, if it's somebody though who you know, may not respond well to an answer that's based on research, or maybe if it's a student that has a question about it, I think you've got to have them you know, try it a little bit. Maybe show them something that they can do, little small pieces. Don't register for a whole course then. Let's just look at it this way, right? Try this one thing. Um, you know, you can, ha you can send them to some of the open resources, right? And have them say, okay, try this for one. See what you think about that. Let's talk about it and really open up what are the misconceptions you have and where do they come from? And it's, the answer is going to be different every time depending on the person and what it is that they're, they're having an issue with. I started off in science and again people say, well how can you do that online? Well there are ways and, and you, you just have to be a little creative and you do have to talk a lot and kind of work with each other, other, other you know, colleagues to say, well how could we approach you know, doing this specific piece online um, and and sometimes it means that we're, we're our thoughts might be ahead of the technology even so then it might be okay let's let's look at those innovative and emerging technologies and let's see how can those help us and what can we get other people to start thinking about in order to make this a reality and and with time then some of those can actually happen um, but yeah conversations are extremely important when the glimmer of light explodes in their eyes that I, I don't need this guy to teach me something because I know how to go out and learn it on my own and find it and discuss it and, and benefit from what I can do. Uh, that gives them a sense of autonomy, self-efficacy, efficacy, and uh, it's really rewarding for me for them to get that sense of independence. I mean, I, I think I am most helpful to students when they finally realize I'm not teaching them anything. They're teaching themselves something.